is uh, a healthcare company, the Zephyr company, which is coming up. And I'm the inventor of multiple robots like uh, Manav, Mind Control, World's First Mind Control, Wheelchair, blah, 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 blah. There are 35 patents which I have. So there's, there's a lot of things which I'm doing. And my idea of coming down to your institution is to let you know what is going on into the robotics sphere, into the technology sphere, so that you know what our country is doing and you know what is there in stock for you once you get out from here and you can make an informed decision of what exactly do you want out from your life. So today we'll be talking about reimagining robots. Two arms, maybe a face, legs, which can talk, which can walk, which is very right, right? Because that is the picture which has been painted inside our brains is our intelligence. But there's so much more to that. There's so much more to that robot that we are thinking about right now. But because the idea of a robot starts with humanoid robots, robots which has legs, arms and face, that's why I bought one with me. <laughs> and let me talk about that robot. So the robot which I brought along with me is Manav. And this is how Manav looks like. I personally find it very, very cute. I don't know about you guys. Uh, now this is the India's first and the only completely made in India robot. This robot has been made by a 3D printer, all oh, the white parts that you can see on this robot has been made by a 3D printer. Because of which we have been able to uh, make this robot extremely light, yet extremely cheap as well. It has two cameras right there in its eyes, so he can see around, and not only can he see around, he can also judge how far you are from the robot's perspective. So he can just the distance between different objects. Along with that, it has two microphones so you can understand what you're saying and also make out where the sound is coming from. So if you're calling Manu from that corner of the room, it will understand that you're calling it from that corner of the room, it will move his face and go in that direction. So it has a spatial awareness. Along with that, there are multiple other things that we have into this robot uh, that, that, that are really, really special to this robot. But today, I have programmed this robot to do something very, very special. So, can you guess what it would be doing today? Any ideas? No? Okay, so let me first introduce Manav to you and then let's see what it is going to do today. So here we have Manav with us. This is how it looks like. Does it look cute to you? Okay, wonderful. So, what we will be doing today with this robot is I've programmed it to dance. Okay? Now, let me connect this robot firstly so that I can power this up and how the economics basically relate to this. Now, why we made this robot is for research purposes. Now, you might be thinking, what kind of research are we talking about on this robot? Now, I believe a lot of you are coming from technical background. Yes? No? Okay, I was told that a lot of you are coming from technical background, but just in case, if you are not coming from technical background, let me, let me give you a brief explanation. If you want to become a computer engineer, do you need a computer? Yes. If you want to become a photographer, do you need a camera? Yes. Right? If you want to become a race car driver, do you need a race car? Yes. Without all those things, you can't become what you want to become. The same way, robotics is coming big time right now. But the big problem is that the robots are not there in the academy, in, in the colleges, with the enthusiasts, because the robots are very, very expensive. When we talk about a robot of this standard in the international market, we are talking about 10 to 15 lakh rupees. Whereas with this robot, we are only talking about 1.5 lakh rupees, which is around 10 times cheaper than any other robot in the world. And not only that, the biggest problem with these uh, international robots are that at any point of time, if you break the robot, now you have to again send it down to France or Germany or US and you have to wait and pray to the God that it doesn't incur a very huge cost, right? With this robot, <coughs> you break this robot and nothing really happens because if you have a 3D printer, you give it a command and you print the part again. And within two to three hours, the robot starts working back like normal. So the fear of controlling an expensive robot is also taken away. The fear of buying an expensive robot is also taken away. So now you can go ahead and do whatever you want with the robot because even if so, even if you are not able to repair that robot, 
it is an Indian robot and the support and all of the things are available here in India itself. So you don't really don't have to worry about uh, controlling this robot. And that's where Manav comes in, where, where we have a lot of uh, scope for new development and we have an open source community where we, everyone can program new things and make uh, something completely special out of it. Let's go ahead and understand what exactly we are doing after Manav. Now, when we talk about a robot, what is the biggest problem when we talk about robots? The biggest problem that we talk about robots uh, is how do we communicate with the robot? How do we tell the robot what exactly we have to do at that point of time? Because, as you know, you might have used Siri or OK Google, you know, they work very well, but not always, right? Not always. So, voice command is not really uh, the best thing. Uh, then we talk about multiple sensors and multiple technologies which are coming in. But at the end of the day, the best way to communicate with anything right now is by typing. Am I correct? Right? But what if we can make this experience completely uh, subconscious? Something that happens all the time but you don't even know about it. And that's how we imagine the technology to be. Technology should be there, but it shouldn't be visible. That's the real technology. That's when the technology really helps you out and doesn't really bound you by uh, different capabilities. Now, we started understanding on how we can control these robots and that's where EEG came in. Now, EEG is something which is really, really special. This is a brain sensor. And what this brain sensor does is your brain, let me, let me give you a brief biology lesson. Your body is made up of cells. Am I correct? Yes. Right? Stop me if I'm wrong at any point of time. Your brain is made up of cells and uh, your body is made up of cells and your brain is also made up of cells but a different type of cells called neurons. <coughs> Correct? Now these neurons have this electrical chemical activity that goes uh, inside those neurons and these neurons are connected to thousands of other neurons around it. Right? Now for every single thinking that I am doing at this point of time, there is a different type of electrical activity that is going on inside my brain at this point of time. Correct? Right? Now, how many of you have got an electric shock in your life? Yeah? Was it refreshing? Yes. Yes? Okay. What that proves is, you know, your body just doesn't stop all the current, all the electricity. So, your body is not a very good conductor, but still a good conductor of electricity. So, when your brain is making some, these electrical impulses, there's a slight chance that some of those electrical impulses are coming out from your brain onto your forehead and onto your skull. Right? Now what we do is we make sensors that pick up those minute signals from your scalp and from your forehead and then amplify it to a level which is understandable. And then we filter it down. And after filtering it down, we are giving those electrical signals to a machine learning algorithm through which we can understand what is going inside your brain. And once, once we go ahead and do that, we are able to understand if you are concentrating on what I am saying, whether you are thinking something of the past, if you are, uh, if, if you are daydreaming, if you are happy, if you are sad, all of these emotions can be read and that is done by a single headset that I put on your head. So when, as soon as I put that headset on your head, I can get to know what you are thinking at that point of time. And this is what that EEG sensor enables us to do. Now, you must be thinking, this is a very good technology. So what we did with this technology is something really brilliant. So we know what's there in your mind. And with that, we built this. Now, this is a wheelchair made for people who have full body paralysis. Now, there are multiple conditions in which uh, this paralysis happens. But let me give you a glimpse of it. A person who has a full body paralysis is not able to move, not able to speak, not able to sometimes even move their eyes. So, this condition is called a locked in syndrome. A locked in syndrome condition is a condition in which a person is not able to do anything or communicate to the world whatsoever. That's why it's called a locked in syndrome. And it's a very devastating condition because uh, the person, though he's living, but there are no signs of living. So, that's a, that's a very, very bad condition to be in. So, to give them some control of their life back to them, we made this feature and what you can see is I am wearing something on my head and it is a very small sensor that you can see right here. 
case here. Now the sensor sends all those electrical signals to the, the wheelchair and I'm not controlling this wheelchair and I'm just thinking of uh, taking it to different directions and controlling this uh, wheelchair in multiple parameters and it automatically does that. So let me play this video. So my hands are up in the air, I'm not doing anything. This wheelchair is just being controlled by my thoughts at this point of time. And as you can see, that now I'm taking this wheelchair into a very, very narrow alley. And all of this is happening when I'm not touching this wheelchair. And this, my dear friends, is the first time in the entire world that this kind of technology has been introduced to the public. Let me tell you, have you heard of Stephen Hawking? Yes. yes. Even this, uh, this wheelchair of Stephen Hawking was not brain controlled. It was muscle controlled, it was sheet controlled. And this wheelchair which you are seeing right now is the world's only wheelchair which is controlled by human brain and is available to be purchased from the market right now. And I'm proud to tell you that this has been made completely here in India itself. any 
other country, but it has been made here in our country in India, and our company and me uh, owns the patent for it as well. So this technology has been completely made and designed in India itself. And you can imagine. And you can imagine the kind of scale which we can take it up to. It is something completely out of this world. Why? Because if I talk about robots, robots are not really programmed to say no automatically, unless we tell them. But here, they are, they are actually expressing themselves under different situations, which is completely random. And think about it for a moment. What causes the human race to be innovative? What causes human race to be innovative? You would have thought? Sorry? In search of a better option. Yes, in search of a better option, yes. Very, very close, but still there is something different. You are thinking a lot of things right now. Right? Can you predict what you will be thinking five minutes from now? No. Right? If I show you maybe this phone, right? If I show you this phone, can you predict how you would feel after seeing this phone for the next time? Can you? No, you can't. What kind of what kind of thing you think about this phone after seeing it for the second time? You don't know. Why? Because your brain is fuzzy in nature. Once you see a problem, you think in a certain way, but when you see that problem again, you see it in a different way. But does that happen in the robot? Robots are governed by algorithms, they are, they are very predictable. If robots are programmed to do certain things, once they, they, they encounter a certain kind of situation, they will and they must have the same kind of response the next time as well. And that's what creates a line between humans and robots. But what we are creating over here is an emotional sensitivity. And with emotional sensitivity, because emotions are what brings fuzziness into human mind. Emotions are what brings the, 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 uh, the unexpected behavior in human mind. And if we have a function of that emotion along with the basic algorithm, we are able to understand, we are able to make the robot think in different way and react in different way under different situations. And that's where the first step is taken to make the robots more like humans. And that's where this technology comes in. So this is a very, very interesting technology and we can keep talking about this technology over and over and over again. But uh, let's, let's move ahead and let's see what else do we have. Oh, I don't think the power is coming over there on the 
So, uh, there are a lot of different things that we are doing except for Manav itself. Uh, there are multiple new technologies that we are making. And there's a question that you might be thinking that, you know, we have made Manav, we have made brain and uh, cloning technologies. There are multiple different technologies that we are making. Uh, from wearable to a jewelry to uh, sports shoes, there are multiple patents that we have uh, under our uh, main company. But the question is, how does everyone benefit from this technology? How do we go ahead and make uh, these technologies for the country and for the world so that they can actually go ahead and use it for their own purposes? Now, uh, this this one thing which we developed, and uh, before, before actually I tell you everything about it. I would like to show you a small video about uh, the small journey that we, we took in the last two years of making a ventilator. How many of you have heard about a ventilator? Yes. In a hospital, JC, you have heard about a ventilator. Do you, do you know how much is the cost of uh, being on a ventilator for a single day? So if you if you go in uh, hospitals like Apollo and all other places, it will be close to one lakh rupees. For a mediocre hospital, it might be between 50 to 70,000 rupees. And the, I mean, even if you go to the, the, the smallest of the hospitals, uh, they won't charge you anything less than 40,000 rupees. That's, that's the median right now. And, you know, uh, the, the average number of days uh, post-op or during a, uh, I mean, a patient can be in a surgery uh, and post-surgery in an ICU is close to four to seven days. So you can simply have a calculation of how much money you'll be spending in the ICU itself. And there are cases in which people are actually needing this ventilator for the rest of their lives. And they are left to die because now they cannot afford the ventilator. And to make an ICU, there are only two things that are needed. One is a ventilator and third, uh, second is the patient monitor. Now patient monitor is costing around a lakh or so, so it's not a very big, big investment. The ventilator is costing between 13 lakh rupees to 20 lakh rupees right now. So it's a, it's a big deal. And uh, the lifetime of a ventilator is between 3 to 5 years. Uh, so, what we did was, we took a case in which uh, we really needed a ventilator and we made a complete revolution out of it. So, I have a very small video to share with you. So, just go through this video and then we will talk more about this ventilator. <laughs>
glimpse of uh, my journey through it. How old are you guys? 19, 20, 21? I, I guess that's the mean age over here, right? Let me tell you, I started making my first robot and I made my first robot when I was 17. I made Manav when I was uh, around 21. I made the brain control feature when I was 22. And right now, I'm not really very old from you, don't judge me from my hairline, but I'm 25, 26 right now. So, this is the time, this is the time which you have right now, and this is when you actually can go ahead and do something in your life. So, don't think that after getting out from this college, maybe you'll get two or three years of experience from a company and then you'll do whatever you have learned about, that will be too late. You have to go ahead and do the things right now. And the second thing which I would like to mention over here is that. You must be knowing already, and if you don't know, it is very important for you to know that you are currently living in a marketing paradise, right? If I, if I basically spot a mosquito or maybe even a fly over here and I try to sell it to the country, there would be some person who will actually buy it. Am I correct or not? Yes. Right? You are living in, in a country which has a lot of problems and if, if you understand those problems and if you deliver according to those problems and if you solve those problems, trust me, you can go ahead and you can live your dream life. You can, you can change the scenario. I was a robotics, I am a robotics scientist. Why am I developing a ventilator? Why am I making different robots for the steel industry or the military or uh, blah, blah, blah? Right? Because I see a problem and you should see that too. And once you see that problem and solve it, you can be the next Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or whatever name you want to be. And that's why I'm here to tell you that everything that you can dream of is possible. Once I started making the mind control feature, people said it was impossible. We made it possible. Brain cloning technology, no one has ever done it. We were ridiculed by a lot of academia that it won't be possible. We made it possible. Making a man of at this point of cost and with this kind of capability, everyone said it is against the rules of the physics. It's not possible. You made it possible. When we first launched the ventilator on the stage, you know, there were a few doctors who came to me and they said, you know, I don't think it would work. I said, we'll see. So, a lot of people will tell and will, will tell a different story about you, but you have to believe in yourself and you have to go ahead and do whatever is there in your mind. What goes will happen? Who was there who was saying thank you? Are you with it? No. He's not here. So I was discussing with, with one of the team members and I was basically talking about his dreams and aspirations are. Let's say you get out of this institution and you you you, you ditch the job that you are getting and you do whatever you dream of. What what worse can happen? Will you come on streets? No. Will you die of hunger? No. What max will happen? The, the, the placement which has happened for your colleague two years prior, you'll, you'll maybe two years late to that position. That's the worst thing that can happen, right? Then why are you not going ahead and trying, giving it a shot, right? Why are you not going ahead and making that dream reality? And that doesn't start after you complete this. Maybe you can start right now after this lecture itself. You can start making a plan and work on it. And that's all I expect you guys to do. So, my dear friends, there's a lot of things that you have to do, we have to do, and you should start right now. Now is the time. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, interesting. Please shoot all the questions that you have. Please, ma'am. function we are trying to give it down in 5,000 rupees because that comes as a package 
with the ventilator so that an ICU can be made in only 50, 60,000 rupees. So, that is what the mother of the ventilator is being made. So, the cost is far away from that shot, right? Yes. So, the revenue, what you are getting? You are getting a lot? Yeah. I just want to. I just really, I'm freaking really want to ask you that thing because you are making us such big things. Yes, yes. You are really making such a big thing. So I just want to know because uh, uh, one of my uh, brother-in-law passed away uh, last year. Okay. He's just 45 and he's a heart attack. Okay. He's nothing like uh, any kind of thing, yes. like blood pressure and all. Mm -hmm. So that is okay. Mm -hmm. But I just want to know that if there is any product, then why do minimum market mein wo logo ko kyun nahi pata chal? Is there something lack of knowledge to the people? It's here, it's here. The problem is here. Right. Uh, when we talk about ventilator, you know, we expected huge numbers, huge numbers, but we didn't get any orders. Right. Uh, a ventilator which is like 1 120th, 1 30th of the cost of a conventional ventilator is not getting orders. Strange. Why? Because, you know, it doesn't have the certification which is required in the US. FDA certification is required. Yes. India doesn't require any kind of certification for a ventilator. Right? Indian government doesn't say or medical association doesn't say that you know you need an FDA certification, FDA is for humans. You need a CE certification. No one really knows about what CE certification is, right? Now let me enlighten you with what CE certification is. CE certification means if I have a product right here, it shouldn't interfere with this camera, it shouldn't interfere with the phone. It has nothing to do what it does with the patient. But doctors here are in the idea, if it is a CE certified, it would work very well. They don't have any idea of what exactly that certification is because they are taught, okay, C certification is European certification. If it is working in Europe, it would work in India, right? So, we had to get these certifications, right? We had to go for a 510K uh, application for the FDA to get an FDA approval, right? And then, you can't even know what kind of a landslide we got, right? And, and before the certification, the cost of these ventilators were even low. But we had to add up some cost because these certifications are expensive, right? So they are paying for these certifications. We can't, can't, can't help it out. So we have a mentality. If it is an American product, it would work good. If it is a German product, it would work even better, right? And if it is an Indian product, I don't know, you know? <laughs> and it's still working like am I home? Yeah, so, so yeah. It's, it's, still, it's still working. Now, the question arises is, uh, you know, as you said, what kind of profits are we making? Yes, I we are giving good amount of profits to our dealers. Uh, we are giving good amounts of discounts when there's a bulk order, and we are still growing. And we are going to whole chain, supply chain, all the time, like whole chain. There, there are a lot of things. So uh, one of the, so once we are developing this ventilator, I won't take a lot of time on the ventilator thing. Uh, but let me just give you an idea. Uh, so once we make a ventilator, we have to think about a hundred things. Because a normal ventilator needs a medical oxygen line and a medical air, right? And that's where we connect the ventilator and that's when it works. Now, if a hospital wants to get, let's say, 10 more ventilator, it has to first put in those pipelines, which are very expensive. It has to put in a plant which produces oxygen, right? It has to put in a plant which produces that kind of a medical air, which is expensive. So even if my ventilator is 30,000 rupees, they won't be able to afford that. So we said, chuck all of those things. We have an inbuilt compressor. Right? Now you don't need medical oxygen, now you don't need medical air, you plug it into the uh, room socket and it starts working. Right? What it did was, now it is also using, uh, being used in airlifts. So, uh, the military, uh, they don't have medical, I mean, they don't have cylinders and all other things in their aircrafts or in their air ambulance. They put a ventilator in there, they put it in the socket, they put it in the battery socket and it starts working. Right? It's working in the ambulances. Around 90% of the ambulances in India are not having a ventilator. And that's why patients die in the middle way. Just to let you know, if you are able to give a proper CPR and if you are able to properly resuscitate a person with a ventilator, a person can live up to two or three days even when he is technically dead. And you can again bring him back to life. You might have heard about stories of Dr. Polian people on ventilator and they are dead. They are actually alive. They are not dead. If they are on ventilator, they are not dead. Right? And they can be brought back to life. And there are situations where people have given CPR for 6 hours, 7 hours, 8 hours, and the patient has been revived. Right. So, 
So the thing is, people, a lot of lives could be saved by this technology. And why we made this technology in such a way, why we use the Android tablet, is because of the ease of the use. We want to remove the human from the equation, because human is the most expensive factor. An uh, intensivist or an, an uh, anesthetist or a pulmonologist would take maybe a lakh rupees or one and a half lakh rupees a month to control that ventilator. Why do we have to need them when we have machine learning? We remove that from the equation. Thank you.